Top 5 Actors That Died From The Bill Cosby Show Welcome to Past Us. Today in this video, we'll discuss about Top 5 Actors That Died From The Bill Cosby Show. But before starting the video, be sure to subscribe to our channel to never miss out on any of our videos. Number 5. Clarice Taylor Clarice Taylor was an American stage, film, and television actress. She's best known for playing cousin Emma on Sanford and Son and Anna Huxtable on The Cosby Show. Born in Buckingham County, Virginia, but raised in Harlem, New York, Taylor was best known for a recurring role on television on The Cosby Show as Dr. Heathcliff, Cliff Huxtable's Bill Cosby's mother, Anna Huxtable. She was nominated for an Emmy Award in 1986 for the role. She was also a regular on Nurse, played Harriet on Sesame Street, and appeared as Grady's cousin Emma on Sanford and Son. Taylor started working in the theater with the American Negro Theater at a time when there were few opportunities for African-American actors and comedians. Clarice Taylor died on May 30, 2011 in Englewood, New Jersey from congestive heart failure, aged 93. She is survived by her two adopted sons, William and James Thomas, and extended family. Number 4. Sammy Davis Sammy Davis Jr. was often billed as the greatest living entertainer in the world. But you know, it's so funny, people know about my relationship with Frank, with Dean, with Liza, of course, and, and the people of my, my people, my age. He was born in Harlem, Manhattan, the son of dancer Elvera Davis and vaudeville star Sammy Davis Sr. His father was African-American and his mother was of Cuban and African-American ancestry. Davis Jr. was known as someone who could do it all, sing, dance, play instruments, act, do stand-up, and he was known for his self-deprecating humor. He once heard someone complaining about discrimination and he said, You got it easy. I am a short, ugly, one-eyed black Jew. What do you think it's like for me? A chain smoker, Davis died from throat cancer at the age of 64. When he died, he was in debt. To pay for Davis's funeral, most of his memorabilia was sold off. Number 3. Robert Culp uh, It's going to be kind of hard to explain, isn't it? I mean, breaking and entering, that's against the law. Checking the trunk of your car, what in the world were you looking for? Robert Martin Culp was born on August 16, 1930 in Oakland, California, the son of attorney Crozy Culp and his wife Bethel Collins, who was employed at a Berkeley chemical company. He offset his only child loneliness by play-acting in local theater productions. Culp also showed a talent for art while young and earned money as a cartoonist for Bay Area magazines and newspapers in high school, but the fascination with becoming an actor proved much stronger. He attended Berkeley High School and graduated in 1947. The athletically inclined Culp dominated at track and field events and, as a result, earned athletic scholarships to six different universities. He selected the relatively minor College of the Pacific in Stockton, California, primarily because of its active theater department. Transferring to various other colleges of higher learning, he never earned a degree. After performing in some theater in the San Francisco area, he moved to Seattle and then New York in 1951. Bob returned to series TV as stern FBI special agent Bill Maxwell, whose job was to work with handsome William Catt, who starred as an ersatz The Greatest American Hero 1981. The show lasted three seasons. Other series guest spots, both comedic and dramatic, included Hotel 1983, Highway to Heaven 1984, and The Golden Girls 1985, and an episode of his old buddy's show, The Cosby Show 1984. In later years, Culp could be seen occasionally as Ray Romano's father-in-law on the hugely popular Everybody Loves Raymond, 1996. His last film, the family drama The Assignment, 2010, was unreleased at the time of his death. On March 24, 2010, the 79-year-old Culp collapsed from an apparent heart attack while walking near the lower entrance to Runyon Canyon Park, a popular hiking area in the Hollywood Hills. Found by a hiker, Culp was transported to a nearby hospital where he died from the head injuries he sustained in the fall. Five grandchildren also survive. Number 2. Michelle Thomas Michelle Thomas was born in Boston but raised in New York and New Jersey. Perfect. You know, it's exciting to be so near to your great mind. Well, could you get a little nearer to my great mind? She attended the Montclair School of Arts and the Broadway Dance Center. She survived by her parents. Pinju R. Thomas, a stage actress and acting coach, and Dennis D. T. Thomas, a founder and current member of the 1970s funk band Cool and the Gang. Her brother David Thomas, her grandfather Cecil G. Saunders Sr., her aunt Eleanor Johnson, her uncle Paul T. Goodnight, and numerous other family members. Miss Thomas played Betsy Brown on stage in Philadelphia. She also appeared on the CBS soap opera The Young and the Restless 1973 as Callie Rogers. On The Cosby Show 1984 as Justine Phillips, the girlfriend of Theo played by Malcolm Jamal Warner, and on Family Matters 1989 as Myra Monkhouse, the girlfriend of Steve Urkel, played by Jaleel White. 
She made guest appearances on a number of other TV shows and also performed in tons of music videos, in Los Angeles theater productions, and in several movies, including Hangin' with the Homeboys 1991. Just prior to her death, Michelle Thomas had received an NAACP Image Award nomination for Outstanding Actress in a Daytime Drama Series for The Young and the Restless 1973. Number 1. Earl Hyman Earl Hyman is a distinguished African-American actor This old man's life, except I was very young at the time, changed because I was bought at a time Who had a 46-year long career on Broadway where he was nominated for a Tony Award, Hyman also was nominated for an Emmy Award as Outstanding Guest Performer in a Comedy Series for his appearance on The Cosby Show 1984, playing Bill Cosby's father, Russell Huxtable. Born in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina on October 11, 1926, Hyman and his family moved to Brooklyn, where he grew up. His parents took him to a production of Henrik Ibsen's Ghost starring Ala Nazimova in Brighton Beach as a present for his 13th birthday, which made him want to be an actor. Impressed with Ibsen, he learned Norwegian, a language he became fluent in, enabling him to act in Norway, where he keeps a second home. In 1944, Hyman made his debut on Broadway in Philip Gordon's Anna Lacusta, 1949, a hit that ran for 957 performances. He next appeared on Broadway in 1952 in Moss Hart's The Climate of Eden, which was a flop. Then played the Prince of Morocco the following year in a production of The Merchant of Venice, 1973, starring Luther Adler as Shylock. In 1955, he had a role in No Time for Sergeants, 1958, a hit that made Annie Griffith a star. Over the next 37 years, he would appear on Broadway another 11 times, ending with his turn in the title role of Ibsen's The Master Builder 1960 in 1992. The circle that had begun back in 1939 had been completed. Hyman made his movie debut as an uncredited extra in the Oscar-winning The Lost Weekend in 1945, but it was TV that proved more welcoming to his talent. He appeared on numerous TV programs from 1954 to 2001, most famously on The Cosby Show. Thank you guys for watching. If you want more videos like this, make sure to like the video and hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video.